about if they say, oh, mum, you can say, oh, what do you think that is then? And often they self-correct. Mm. So they'll realise actually it isn't mum, it is it is mum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so your first session with the children, um, I probably wouldn't worry too much about getting them reading straight away in this session because you need to introduce yourselves to them. Um, they'll want to know why you're there, they'll only ask why certain adults are in the classroom or... Um, yeah, they, 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 they yeah. won't be backwards in coming forward. <laughs> no. I, when, many, many years ago, I, we, I told the children that we were having a visitor. We actually had an offset in, and I said, we're having a visitor. And it was just before Christmas, and this man came in with a clipboard and a suit, and he came up to me and said, you're not Father Christmas. <laughs> I think because it was December, they expected the visitor yeah. to be Father Christmas. So they will say to you, what are you doing here? And what do you, do you have a dog? Yeah. They will ask you lots of questions. Um, so if they do, obviously you can say you're there to kind of... Um, to read with them, to hear them read, to read some things to them. Um, oh, so I've heard you're a really good Yeah, reader. I would try and boost yeah. their self-esteem in, in that bit, telling them because um, if, if you can say you're there to, to, help. to help them to read or something like that, then they might they, kind they, of they won't like that the fact that they're being helped. Yeah. They, if, if you say, oh, I know that you've been chosen because you're one of the best readers in the class, no, I'm telling you. Yeah. Do you know, they, they like that. They like the fact that they're one of the better readers, even yeah. though they're obviously not. But if you say, oh, I'm here to help you, straight away, some of the boys' particular barrier will go up yeah. and they'll be like, I don't need help, I'm all right. Do you know, they'll have that. Yeah. So just be very wary how you're wording why you're there. Yeah. Um, and then develop a bit of a rapport with the children. Um, so introduce your, yourselves, have a discussion with them about maybe their favourite books, uh, what they enjoy reading, their favourite hobbies as well. Um, just to sort of build up that relationship and start to find out a bit more about them and you might find that there's some common things that you can talk about which will help to build that trust that we mentioned at the beginning um, and a lot of that will actually come when you're reading books as well because they'll, they'll read something and they'll start telling you as I answered before about their mum or their dad or whoever who does the same oh, or has, has this, yeah. yeah. I've been told about that, I've been told about that, I've been told about that, I've been told about so yeah, so building up that discussion and, and then bringing um, the book in. And you might like to take the first session to actually read to the child because that is as important as them learning to read themselves is hearing a good model, uh, reading to them, you know, using expression, intonation, um, just making it sound really exciting. Um, and they will sort of pick up on those cues as well and you can do that throughout the reading if you, you could read to them they could read it back to you um, sometimes with the longer books uh, I sometimes do a page each so I'll read a page yeah. and then you get the momentum of the story going and then they read a page so sometimes because if they really are struggling you really lose the fluency of the, the book so if you read a page you're modelling that you know that good reading to them and then they do one well, and it, it sort of gets through the book a little bit easier so that's a suggestion for your first session with the children. So we actually thought we're going to give some books out now, and we thought, okay, I would like me to act <laughs> in pairs. We have a go at doing a walk through of a book. So we'll just hand out a range of books, either in pairs or in threes. So just choose a book, have a look, and just to the person next to you, just have a go at introducing the book to them. Thank you. 
well, it's nice to get an idea of the types of books they might bring as well before yeah. you get there. And then, yeah. um, so just a little bit more on questioning. Um, the national curriculum has some reading domains that um, children have to be able to um, sort of answer questions related to those domains. So I um, touched on this briefly before, um, and in your pack, I think there is. Oh yeah, yeah, those key stage one and yeah. key stage two one. Um, so focusing on vocabulary, that is a quite a big thing at the minute. Vocabulary, extending children's vocabulary. So if they come across a word they don't understand, um, it, is, it does need a discussion really to help them to to understand what it is, um, to develop their vocabulary. Um, you know, you could could use dictionaries or thesauruses in your session as well if, if the child's not sure what they mean, but that is something that's quite big at the minute, developing vocab. Um, retrieval questions, which is just literally, um, you know, looking, it says it in the book, so they're just retrieving that information from the book. Um, sequencing, so can they tell the story in order? Um, just, I was just yeah, actually saying to them, okay, they may come to you already, they've already yeah. started the book, so don't expect them to start again. You could actually say to them, tell me what's happened so far. So you're already asking them that, you know, yeah. can they tell you what's happened at the beginning? Can they tell you what happened next? Yeah. So that's and a bit of summarising as well, Scott, was if they've done that, just say, um, because I do it, I ask children what's happened, and they go on for about 10 minutes, and yeah, yeah. a single bit of the story, and you're like, just, just a quick <laughs> summary would be great, because... You know, we're always rushed in school, but um, but yeah, summarising um, and sequencing, um, inference, which you mentioned before, reading between the lines, um, predicting what might happen next. So that's a good chance if it is a new book that they bring to you when you're doing your walk through. Um, can they predict what might happen if they get read a chapter? Can they predict what might happen next in the chapter? Um, and that can all also build up a bit of excitement as well for next time. Say, oh, let's see if you're right the next time you go. Um, into that school and yeah comparing so that can be comparing it to different books they've read it could be comparing it to their, to their life something in their life it could be comparing different characters within the book so lots of different chances to compare things um, throughout the text um, so we've just put a an extract from Harry Potter actually on your table like that I've got some spells there. We're not going to read it to you. If you could just have read, yeah, just briefly read it through. We are going to be asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> this is a question. Yeah. <laughs> some silent reading. <laughs> Um, so, I'll just ask a retrieval question first of all. Um, so, can you name three things that have been affected by the rain? Okay. Monkeys. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter. You've got work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I hadn't thought of. <laughs> the lake. Yeah, the lake grows. Flower beds. Yeah, the flower beds turn into muddy streams. So they're just picking out that, finding that information in the text and just literally just picking it out from there. Um, and now an inference question. Um, how do you think Oliver is feeling about the training sessions? Yeah, how do you know? What, what, what information tells you that he's happy? Was not 
So that's what we talk about inference. It doesn't tell us that he's happy, but we're using the information that his enthusiasm wasn't dampened. Mm -hmm. So again, that's the discussion. You could, if they were unsure about that, you could say, well, that means that it wasn't dampened. Means actually, he was still very enthusiastic about the training session mm -hmm. starting. So it's using that reading between mm -hmm. the lines on that. Yeah, there's a few nice um, vocabulary opportunities in there. Sort of the raindrop size of bullets thundered on the castle windows. So if they weren't shot at them, or what does thunder sound like? So that's what it sounded like. And obviously that example we just used, um, his enthusiasm wasn't dampened. Well, you might not quite understand that, but you can talk about you know getting damp. It's not a very nice feeling. So, but it wasn't dampened. So, you know that kind of discussion, picking out the, the vocabulary there. Like drenched to the drenched, skin, yeah. and saying, do you know, how do you think, how do you think he's feeling about that? Have you ever been really, really, really wet? Yeah. That you, do you know, you, all your clothes are really wet. So it's bringing that, their own real life into experience into it as well. Um, so we just thought if you could use those questions. questions.